Hello everybody, this is Matt Katz and I just wanted to talk about a big contradiction, the final nail in the coffin, the final insult, the final thing that's going to contradict everything about spirituality and everything, and that is the shameful, embarrassing fact that the only way that spirits can gain any form of new philosophy or outlook in life is to live a virtual fake reality to live a virtual fake reality which is what we are in now they try to bring new philosophies new wisdom from their experiences in this fake simulation and to think to yourself well anything that I learned here in this fake virtual place I'm gonna bring back to my real spiritual world as real wisdom and real philosophy that is just completely stupid and to think that that philosophy and wisdom is good enough to be then taught to everyone and your spiritual world to teach them those experiences from your fake virtual reality that you lived in it's like saying that oh well i'm gonna play graph grand theft auto and whatever i learn from here i'm gonna take it back and i'm gonna tell my children and my grandmother and my dog about how it is uh, to uh, how to pick up a hooker, uh, how to uh, you know um, you know how to uh, go steal money. You know, it's like whether it's good or bad. What I'm trying to say is that whether it's good or bad, it's a virtual motherfucking simulation. Why are you gonna gain philosophy and wisdom from a fucking simulation? That is weak as hell. That is weak as hell. Without the virtual reality of this existence of the living world the spirits wouldn't know what the fuck to do with themselves and they would not have no fucking philosophies to talk about without having to live separate lives in different existence and alternate universes and separate uh, forms of reality they wouldn't have no philosophy they wouldn't know what the fuck to even say or talk about and you have to also uh, have to think about why were the spirits uh, so hell-bent on, you know, trying to find out philosophy and wisdom. Like, what provoked them to have to create philosophy? Because if you think about it, the definition of philosophy, uh, loosely, is um, basically a way of life. Uh, des uh, describing a way of life, a person's point of view of a way of life. And um, the, the only way that philosophy can ever really exist is if there is an issue that has not been solved but that through philosophy can be passed down through generation through generation over and over grandson to grandson and, and whatnot and the thing is though is that only in the virtual experiences that they have that they call past lives can they ever really know what the true meaning and the true power of a philosophy is because in their real reality and the afterlife it's just all vanilla it's just all bland it's all just a plateau and so but the thing is, is what drove them to have to look or devise philosophy it's like why would you want to leave the comforts the complete solitude the safety of your world of your room if you're completely safe and completely comfortable there is no point to have to search or to ponder about philosophy or wisdom because you're in a complete equilibrium of peace of self because having to overexert oneself suggests that the spirits have a sort of negative element to them even if it is something as uh, simplistic and as seemingly um, mundane and inane as philosophy and wisdom because this can be then seen as a form of irrational erratic behavior even as something as small as trying to to defy the normality of your current position and your reality even if 
If it's something as small as trying to look out the window, which you have never done for 1,000 years, you just all of a sudden decide to look out the window. That type of behavior is very irrational and very questionable. To leave the comfort of the solitude and the equilibrium of your peaceful world so that you can explore crazy thoughts and realities is very questionable. Very questionable.